Whenever people spot this plane, they're immediately struck with the question, why does it look so extraordinary? It's not just its appearance that's arresting, it's the masterful engineering behind it. The aim was bold and clear, to craft an aircraft that sets new standards. The brilliant stroke? Positioning the engines in an unconventional arrangement, creating the Defiant's unique, asymmetrical design. A true marvel, it dazzles both in its visual impact and technological innovation. In the 1970s and 80s, Bert Rutan experienced a highly productive phase in his career, developing numerous innovative, fast, and high-performance models for home-built aircraft. He led the way in devising a new method of construction that utilized molded foam and fiberglass, bypassing the need for traditional molds and creating sleeker airplane designs. Rutan founded scaled composites with the objective of pushing the boundaries in aircraft design for commercial and defense clients. Prior to this, at Rutan Aircraft Factory, he designed the groundbreaking Voyager. This aircraft earned a place in history as the first to fly around the world non-stop without refueling. In the early 1990s, Rutan set his sights on creating an aircraft that would not sacrifice safety or efficiency, continuing his legacy of innovation in aviation design. Enter the Rutan Defiant, a twin-engine aircraft with canard control and centerline thrust. As a proof of concept, this four-seater push-pull engine aircraft featuring a unique design, evolved from the insights gained from the smaller Variese. It maintained the rear-positioned, swept-back wings with winglets, a canard foreplane, and a combination of retractable nose wheel and fixed main wheel landing gear. To appreciate the innovative nature of the Defiant, one must consider the prevailing aircraft design standards of the era. Twin-engine aircraft, largely unchanged since the 1930s, typically featured an engine on each wing, with a symmetrical airframe on both sides of the aircraft centerline. The main advantage of this design was its redundant systems for safety. If one engine failed, the other could continue to power the aircraft, a critical feature for overwater flights where engine failure would pose significant risks. The standard twin-engine configuration is not without its drawbacks. Should one engine of a conventional twin fail, the aircraft faces challenges not just from the loss of power, but from uneven thrust. The farther the engines are placed from the aircraft's center, the more severe the effect of this asymmetrical thrust becomes. To combat the issue of uneven thrust and the problems related to the critical engine, some aircraft designers have turned to a centerline thrust configuration, aligning one engine in front and another at the rear in a push-pull setup. This arrangement centralizes the thrust line, but it introduces other problems. The noise level inside the cabin can be significantly higher, and vibrations can be more pronounced compared to conventional twin-engine designs. The Cessna Skymaster exemplifies this push-pull design, yet it falls short in terms of efficiency because of several design shortcomings. The cabin of the Skymaster is notorious for its loud and vibratory environment. Back to the Defiant, Bert Rutan's design utilized a canard on the nose for pitch control, winglets, and a retractable nose gear with fixed, slickly fared mains. Typically, the Defiant realized economies of design not possible on normal twins. The airframe had a wetted area only 56% that of normal twins, and the winglets offer 30% less induced drag by increasing the effective span. The debut of the prototype airplane sparked significant excitement in the general aviation sector, particularly as Rutan revealed his intention to seek certification for the Defiant for mass production. Breaking new ground beyond his earlier single-engine models, Rutan equipped the Defiant with two 160-horsepower O320 Lycoming engines, a design choice aimed at preventing asymmetrical thrust problems. While pilots found the Skymaster to be a manageable twin-engine aircraft, it was plagued by various issues that led to its downfall. Rutan, prioritizing safety above all, managed to circumvent these issues, making the Defiant an almost foolproof twin-engine aircraft. In line with the canard designs that came before it, the Defiant was built with a strong emphasis on the safety and well-being of its passengers. Rutan spared no effort in designing the Defiant creating an aircraft that skillfully avoided the common pitfalls associated with operating twin-engine planes on a single engine. 
The aircraft, designed with a singular focus on performance and efficiency, boasts a configuration that accommodates a crew of one pilot and has the capacity to carry three passengers. It measures an impressive 22 feet 10 inches in length, which is complemented by a wingspan of 30 feet 9 inches, standing at a height of 9.33 feet. The wing area is expansively designed, covering 139.4 square feet, which plays a crucial role in its lift and stability. When it comes to weight, the aircraft is relatively light, with an empty weight of 1,701 pounds. However, it can support a gross weight of nearly 3,000 pounds. This translates to a useful load of nearly 1,300 pounds, which is not particularly below industry ideal. In terms of fuel capacity, the aircraft is able to hold up to 120 gallons of fuel to feed the two engines, each capable of delivering 160 horsepower. In terms of performance, the aircraft excels with a maximum speed of 188 knots and a comfortable cruise speed of 167 knots. Its range is equally notable at 1,000 nautical miles. The service ceiling of the aircraft reaches up to 18,000 feet with a rate of climb of 1,600 feet per minute. Regarding its capability for long-distance cruising, the Defiant stood out impressively. Fuel consumption rate is just 15 gallons per hour at 65% power. It enabled a pilot and passengers to effortlessly journey 1,000 nautical miles without the need for refueling. However, efficiency was just one of the many strengths of the Defiant. True to Rutan's design philosophy, the foremost emphasis in the Defiant's design was on safety, and it was evident that Bert Rutan had succeeded in creating an exceptionally easy to handle twin engine aircraft. The Defiant displayed several unique flying characteristics that set it apart from other twin-engine planes. It had an innate affinity for flight, maintaining its speed and altitude with a remarkable reluctance even when power was cut. One of the most notable features was its virtually non-existent stall tendency, allowing the pilot to fully pull back on the stick without significant risk. This characteristic significantly enhanced safety as it meant that even in the event of an engine failure, the pilot of the Defiant had a higher margin for error and a better chance of returning safely, both for the aircraft and for themselves. The interior design of the cabin offered comfort for both the pilot and passengers, ensuring a pleasant journey for all on board. The control panel was notably roomy and expansive, providing ample space for the installation of a wide range of avionics equipment. However, there was a minor limitation in terms of installing radar equipment, as the wing's narrow design did not allow for the accommodation of a dish antenna. In addition to its comfortable cabin and versatile panel, the Defiant boasted impressive altitude capabilities. Demonstrating this, Bert Rutan's brother Dick once piloted the aircraft to heights exceeding 25,000 feet. Remarkably, all of these high-altitude feats were achieved with an engine system that was carburetted and normally aspirated, rather than being fuel-injected and turbocharged. When both engines of the Defiant were functioning normally, the aircraft exhibited a prompt response to throttle inputs during takeoff. However, it wasn't particularly suited for short runways. The Defiant didn't cling to the ground excessively, but it wasn't designed as a short takeoff and landing aircraft either. Once airborne and cruising at a stable 100 knots with the nose gear tucked in, the Defiant ascended as if propelled by a powerful force. One of the remarkable aspects of flying the Defiant was that, for the most part, it could be operated as if it were a single-engine aircraft, smoothly controlling both throttles simultaneously, regardless of whether one or both engines were active. In single-engine mode, the aircraft was exceptionally tolerant and easy to handle, Nevertheless, attempting a single-engine takeoff, especially under conditions like Mojave's 3,000-foot pressure altitude, was not advisable. The issue of single-engine operation had been a significant challenge for the Skymaster, as Cessna discovered. Some pilots, not realizing the rear engine had stopped during taxi or run-up, attempted to take off using only the front engine. To address this, Cessna implemented a procedure where the rear throttle was advanced first during takeoff, followed by the front throttle, ensuring a safer and more controlled ascent. In a single engine go around, a pilot simply needs to fully advance the throttles and pull back on the control stick to maintain flight. 
The Rutan Defiant, like the Cessna Skymaster, performs slightly better with only the rear engine active than with just the front engine. Under normal conditions, the rear engine can achieve around 300 to 350 feet per minute climb, compared to the front engine's 250 to 300 feet per minute. This difference, offset by differently pitched propellers, results from reduced fuselage drag and less turbulent air affecting the rear propeller when the front engine is not in operation. The Rutan Defiant stands out from conventional designs, appealing to pilots seeking uniqueness. However, building a Defiant requires significant investment in time and money, beyond the reach of many. For those who can afford it, the Defiant presents a forward-thinking design, offering advanced performance and safety. Despite its promise, the Defiant faced challenges. The high costs of certifying such a novel design deterred potential investors, relegating the prototype to being just Burt Rotan's personal aircraft. The outcome is particularly regrettable considering the Defiant's advancements in safety, performance and efficiency. Its pioneering nature may have been too advanced for its time. Of the 200 plan sets sold, around 20 kits were actually constructed, with 9 known to be in operation by mid-1987 and 19 registered with the FAA in 2005. In conclusion, the Rutan Defiant, a true defiant in the realm of aviation, represents an extraordinary blend of innovative design, aerodynamic efficiency and safety, pioneering a unique approach in aircraft engineering that, despite its limited production, leaves a lasting impact on the principles of aircraft design and the pursuit of aerodynamic excellence. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on our latest posts. Thank you for your support.